Shout it again in Jesus' name. Let's give God a hand praise today. Hallelujah. Oh, he's worthy. I'm the praise. Saints, turn, open up your Bibles with me to the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. And I, like I've said in time past, your Bible is your plate. Your Bible is your plate. And uh, this is the time where God's word is placed on your plate. It's time to eat it all. Whatever God puts on your plate, mm, don't leave it for tomorrow, but eat it all up today. The book of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. The book of Jeremiah chapter 18. And I would like for you to follow along with me. Beginning at verse number one. Um, the book of Jeremiah chapter 18. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Let the church say amen. amen. Saints, turn with me to the book of Romans. For our New Testament scripture, the book of Romans, and the Lord is speaking to us as you tune in with your spiritual ears. Let God, let God speak. Let God speak to you. Romans chapter 9, and uh, follow along with me. Beginning at verse number 19 of the book of Romans, chapter 9. When you have it, say amen. Thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Verse 22, saints read that. In verse 23, let's read together. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy that he had afore prepared unto glory. Let the church say amen. Saints, our last passage of scripture is coming from the book of James. The book of James, chapter 4, chapter 4. Beginning at verse number one, and I would like for you to follow along with me. Beginning at verse number one of the book of James, excuse me, chapter four, chapter four and verse one of the book of James. When you have it, say amen. From whence come wars and fightings among you? 
come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Go down to verse 6, and it says, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. In verse 7, saints, read that. Let the church say amen. We praise God for the reading and the hearing of his holy word. And there was a quite a few verses of scripture. However, I trust that the Lord is speaking to your hearts. And uh, he has a message for his people this morning. And the message is is stop fighting against God. Stop fighting against God. Now you might ask yourself, well, how can I fight against God? He's stronger than me. He has more knowledge than I do. It is a fight that none of us can win. Yet, God, he had a people. And they were not a, a cooperative people. They were not a people that were submissive. But they were rebellious. And they refused to fully submit to the ways that pleased the Lord. So, in other words, they were fighting against his word. And uh, when we look at the passage of scripture, we see that this People, they were fighting against one another. And when one cannot love another, when one cannot forgive another, when one cannot be, agree with another, it means that there's a war that is going on on the inside. When you can't get along with someone else, that means that you're not getting along with God. When you can't love like God say love, then you have not fully appreciated the love that God has for you. And so God told this people in the book of James, stop your fighting because they were warring against one another. And the war was not necessarily with brother or sister, but there was a war going on inwardly. And we, as a people of God, we have a nature that wars against God. It is our fleshly nature. It is our old nature. And when God fills you with his presence, you become a new creature and you have been given a new nature. Yet, the new spirit, the Bible tells us, works contrary to this old nature or this flesh. We are unable to please God in this flesh. This flesh is willing 
to do wrong, but not willing to please God. It's the spirit that's willing. You thank God if, if it was up to your flesh, you would have stayed home. But yet, the spirit will move you. The spirit will impress upon you that I need to be filled up with spiritual things. The, the spirit has an appetite for the things that pertain to God, whereas this flesh has a desire or an appetite for the things that please the flesh. But yet, the things that please the flesh cannot benefit your soul. But when you come and dine from God's table, hallelujah, God word has a way of encouraging and lifting up your soul. It, it has a, 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 an effect on your inside that will influence you to uh, serve God. It will motivate you to, to please God. And, and, and you need to be around others and an and environment uh, that will help you serve God and not an environment that will hinder you from serving God. And, and so God, he was not happy uh, with this people as James began to write because not only was this people warring against one another, but they were also warring against God. And why were they warring against God? Because God wanted to be their friend, but the people wanted to be friends with God's enemy. And God's enemy is the world. And so when one becomes friends with the world, they become enemies of God. But if you want God to walk with you, if you want God to be your friend, you have to unfriend the world. For this flesh wants to be like the world. This flesh wants to be associated with the world. But the spirit wants to be like God. The spirit wants to be close to God. The spirit wants to be in the presence of God. So this is where the battle uh, comes because the spirit doesn't force you to do anything for God, but you have to yield to that spirit. You have to surrender. And as God spoke, he said, I have more grace. I have more grace. See, we are here by grace, but to experience more grace from God, it is contingent on how much we submit to God. But yet, if we become proud, and, and God says, I resist the proud. And, and, and so what does pride mean? Pride means I'm going to do it my own way. Um, I, I'm not going to fully surrender to your will, Lord. I'm not going to fully surrender to your way. I, I'm going to serve you part way, but not all the way. And so there, there could be things that God is trying to address in, in our life, but don't, don't fight against God when he, he's trying uh, to steer you in, in the right direction. He's trying to steer you in, in the right pathway, the pathway of his, of his blessings. God wants to bless you. He, he wants uh, to commune with you in a, in a greater way. But yet we keep pushing him away. We, we keep fighting against uh, the hand of God. But, but God said in verse 7 in the book of James, I want you to submit. Submit yourselves to God. And the only person I want you to resist is the devil. For God wants you to remain in his hand. 
And God used the illustration of a potter. And a potter works with clay. As the clay spins on, on a wheel, the potter molds and shapes that clay into a certain type of a vessel. And, and so the potter, he works or she works solely with their hands. And it, it's, it's a good place to be in the hands of the Lord. When, when God is, is caressing you, when God is holding you, you, you can feel his love wrapped around you but you know sometimes as, as I remember as a child and my, you know your parents they, they want to hug you and you you push them away you, you resist your I don't want to want to be hugged you, you're resisting and, and and God wants to hold you close but but yet uh, we we can resist God when we don't fully submit to him and so we have to know that it is more blessed to be in God's hands because there was a time where we were in the hands of the devil and it took the hand of God, the power of God to snatch us out of the hand of the enemy. And when we were in the hand of the enemy, he was shaping us. He was conforming us into the ways of the world. He was influencing us. And we haven't been saved all our life. Hallelujah. But I thank God that he delivered me. And, and when God puts you in his hand, he's not done. He's not done. There, there's still some work to be done. And, and when, when God holds you, in his hand, now he's trying to work in you. But here, the book of Romans, uh, you see that there was a resistant people. Uh, they were a rebellious people. And, and what they said to God is that why, in verse 19, why doth he find fault? Why doth he find fault? They, they're, they're questioning God. And they're, they're saying to God, well, why don't you look at the good things that I do? Why do you always have to point out the negative? Why do you have to point out my faults? Well, God, he has a purpose. Because that fault, that sin is hindering God from drawing closer to you. And, and so God, he is bringing something to your attention that might benefit you, but you have to address it. You have to confess it unto God. But yet the people were complaining. They were, you know, you don't have to be so negative. And, and then they said, uh, the next question is, is why, it says, who hath resisted his will? In other words, they were saying, it's not me. Right? I'm, I'm fine. I'm in my own eyes. I'm doing good. In, in my own eyes, I'm okay. But when God's word began to show us that something that needs to be addressed it is not to hurt us it's to help us because God wants a relationship with his people and he does not want us to uh, just serve him on our terms but God is always showing us there's one thing that you're lacking uh, and when I was a child I would bring home a report card and I would have an A and two or three, two A's, maybe a B, a C, and then there was a D. And uh, my parents, they would always focus on the D, right? And in my mind, I would say, well, what about the A, right? And the A and gym don't count because, <laughs> because you get an A just for showing up in gym 
But it, it's in our nature for our human nature to point to the good that we've done. But God's word just has a way, and it's not negative, but it's showing us something about ourselves. It's showing us that there's something that is not pleasing God. And, and if we want to be in a relationship, you have to be concerned about the other pleasing the other person. It's not just about pleasing yourself. But, but God wants to be pleased as well. And, and it can't just be one-sided. Any husband or wife knows uh, that um, if it's just one-sided and all of the good things are being done toward one person, the other person will be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and this is God's way of showing us. I, I blessed you in abundance, but, but I just want you to address this one thing. So they were re resistant uh, to receiving uh, a correction from God. And then they begin to say, well, why hast thou made me thus? And, and so you can see all the, the questioning that they had. And it wasn't a question inquiring or wanting to know. It was more criticizing. Why am I in this situation? Why did you allow me to experience this? And, and, and God, he is God all by himself. He doesn't have to explain anything to us. But whatever you're going through right now is for a purpose. And God, he can fulfill that purpose for your betterment if we don't resist. If we don't fight against him, God is trying to perfect us and he's trying to refine us. And he, he let us know God responded first by saying that I have power. God is omnipotent and, and he's not boasting or bragging, but he lets us know I'm in control of all things. But I want you to relinquish control of your life that I might have full control, that you might surrender unto me and not unto yourself. God, he wants his power. His power is his hand. And we don't mind uh, the hand of God or the blessing of God when they're benefiting us. But we have something to say when the hand of God is resisting us. And so we can't have it both ways. God, he wants us to stop fighting him. And when we surrender to his will and way, there, there are greater blessings. There's a greater joy and a, a greater fellowship that comes with God. And, and God said, not only do I have the power, but he says, I'm long-suffering. I'm, I'm patient and I'm, I'm giving you more time uh, uh, to get right and I'm giving you more time upon this earth oh Lord that you might draw closer to me every day that you wake up amen God allowed that and he's giving you more time to get your house in order hallelujah don't think that my house is already in order but because there, there's some work to be done it may seem right in your sight but when God brings something to your attention then don't resist it don't fight against it but say Lord yes Lord I need to make a change I need Lord thank you Lord for revealing that to me but but this people was a stubborn people and and this people was a rebellious people and they didn't want to serve God according to to a way that pleased God, but they wanted to serve God on, on their terms. And so God, he began uh, to let us know I'm patient and I'm giving you time. Why? Because he says, I'm preparing you. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to get you ready that you might be a vessel of glory. Right? This, this time that we have on earth is very limited. And we don't know when death will come 
and we don't know when the rapture will come. But yet, saints, every day is a, a day of urgency that, that God wants, hallelujah, to bring us into his family. He wants to bring us into right fellowship with him. And, and so when God sent a word to Jeremiah, he was speaking. I hope you see the connection. Uh, it was consistent throughout the different generations in the Bible that the people of God were very resistant to God's message. And uh, every time God had a word to bring unto them, they didn't want to hear it. Uh, they did not want to hear the bad that was in their life. But they just wanted to hear the good. And, and some messages, you know, it, it, it's encouraging, uplifting, and makes you want to shout. But then there's those messages that God sends uh, that may not make you shout, but it, it should make you uh, contemplate, Lord, I need to do some work. <laughs> I, I may not be able to do some shouting right now, but Lord, let me do. See, before, as a child, before we can go out and play, we had to do our chores. We had to do some housework. Well, we didn't like to do it. And so what we tried to do, we tried to hurry up and do and half do it so that we can go outside and enjoy, hallelujah, our friends. Right. And, and, and this sometimes, saints, we have to uh, do some work. We have to do some work on our own house. And, and when God begins to show us what's in our house, because the house that we have is made of clay, it's, it's, it's subject to error, it, it's, it's, it's a fleshly house. And when God sees something that's marred or defiles, uh, the vessel that he's trying to make, he, he wants to show it to us. And so God, he used the illustration of a potter. And uh, he says that the people were a work in his hands. And we have to consider ourselves a, 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 a person within a work in God's hand. We are his workmanship. And he started a good work, but he's not done yet. And as he continues to work, we are in his hands. And, and that's the best place that we can be. It is in the hand of the Lord. And, and God said, well, if, amen, as, he, as the word came to Jeremiah, he told him to go down to the potter's house. And when you get there, I'm going to give you more words. See, the beauty of God is that when you obey one aspect of his word, then God, he uh, will reveal more to you. And, but we have to be faithful over the one step. Then by faith, God will guide us to take the next step. See, God said, I'm going to start you out with one word. And when you obey the one word, I'm going to give you many words. See, when you're faithful over a few things, God, he's going to, amen, give you more things. And, and this is what God has in store for his people. This is how we, we have fellowship with God. And this is how we serve God. And, and so God was, had this vessel. And uh, this vessel was in the hand of God. But, but yet God, he would, the people would not allow God to have his way. And when you look at Jeremiah here, I want you to go down to verse 12 and look what the people, see, this is, we, we always have something to say. And in verse 12 of chapter 18, it says, and they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices and we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. And not only must we stop fighting against God, but we have to stop talking back to God. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. We, we have to stop talking back to God. You know, as a child, you know, I, I, you know I'm, talk, I'm talking about me. You know, because, you know, you come up as a child and you look back and you did some foolish things. 
You would talk back to your parents and, and, and think for some reason that you're going to get the last word in. And, you know, this flesh always got to have the last word. Mm-mm, but not in my household. Yeah, my parents had the last word. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but today, we, we sometimes, we, 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 we talk back to God. We, we tell God what we want to do. Or we, we, instead of asking him, Lord, what should I do? And we, we tell God what we're going to do. And as you can see in Romans, they, they always had a question. They always asked why. And it was not in, in a conducive or beneficial way. And this people, they said, look, we are going to do things our own way. See, they had an intent. They had a desire to serve God, but they wanted to do it their way and did not have a desire to submit to God. And so the Lord, he let them know, saints of God, it, it wasn't going to benefit them. It doesn't benefit us to resist God. It doesn't benefit us to uh, fight against God. But, but God said, if you want your blessings, if you want healing, if you want a greater fellowship, we learn how to submit to the hand of God, submit to the will of God, and God will raise us up. Uh, God, he has a pathway for all of our lives. And uh, the fact that there was one who crossed your path and told you about a man named Jesus, uh, at the time you were in the hands of, of the enemy, but yet the hand of God touched you. Oh, I'm, I never forget. The hand of God was knocking on my door, trying to get my attention. He could not come in until I submit to him, until I surrendered unto his holy word. And God said that I'm going to do evil unto this people, but if they repent, then I'm going to withhold uh, that which I intended to do unto them. And, and that is the way of God today. Saints, we can make our situation worse when we uh, resist against the will of God. And, and we don't realize it, but God, he my, through my experiences, I, I've learned, saints, through uh, many heartaches that I could have avoided if I would have just submitted to God sooner rather than later. And uh, no one knows what's in your house, but God knows what's in your house. And it's not for us to try to judge and find out what's going on in someone else's house, but Lord, I need you to clean up my house. I need you to speak to my house. Hallelujah. And God, he, amen, met us all, oh Lord, on a pathway. And when God first met you, you were not on the pathway that God desired you to be on. But yet, God has a way of, of stopping you. Hallelujah. And you had a choice to make. It was either to continue down the pathway that leadeth to destruction and death or follow the pathway of Jesus. For he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, I have a joy, O oh Lord, by the Holy Ghost that I can give unto you. But you must seek me and call on my name. Oh, he's a good God. And God, he, in his word, had a servant. But he wasn't the servant of God at first. See, we don't all start out as servants of God, but we are born the servants of sin. And we're born on the wrong pathway. And yet it takes God to get our attention. And there was one by the man by the name of Saul of Tarshish who was 
fighting against God's people. He was fighting against uh, God's church. See, God's church is not a building, but God's church are Holy Ghost filled believers uh, that are no longer dead, but are alive in Jesus. Well, Saul was one that was coming up against anyone that calls on the name of Jesus. For the devil knows that there's power in the name of Jesus. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. And the more you call on that name, oh Lord, nothing can stop you from calling on that name. Well, Saul was determined, oh Lord, to cast those in prison who called on the name of Jesus. And he was traveling on the road of Damascus. <laughs> Hallelujah, to receive authority that, uh, that he might accomplish that, his plan. That, but while he was traveling on that road, uh, that, he was on the road of darkness. Uh, that, but yet there was a light that, that shineth uh, that on his pathway uh, that it shined uh, that all around him uh, that the light didn't come from below uh, that but it came from heaven that hallelujah now you may not have uh, that an experience like this uh, that but yet Jesus uh, that when you call on his name uh, that his light uh, that oh Lord will shine uh, that and the more you call him uh, that the brighter the light uh, that will shine uh, that and when the light uh, that it knocked Paul uh, that Saul, if you will, uh, that down to his knees, uh, that and then there was a voice uh, that that said, Saul, Saul, uh, that why persecutest thou me? Uh, that as he saw was fighting uh, that against God's people, uh, that and if you're fighting against God's people, uh, that you're fighting against God, uh, that and God began to ask. Ask him a question. That, why, why? That, hallelujah, thou persecutest me. That, this is Jesus talking. That, and he wasn't physically persecuting Jesus. That, but those that got Jesus that, on the inside, that, you might as well be persecuting God. That, he said it's hard that, for thee to kick against him. That the pricks that what does that mean that see well that oh Lord it refers to an oxen that when they that got out of line that the farmer would poke that and prime that oxen that to steer them back that in the right direction that and the oxen didn't like it that so the oxen would raise up his leg and kick at it that and the farmer would poke him even further that see the more you fight against God that you're just hurting yourself that you're just bringing more that suffering upon yourself that but the moment that I said the moment that you surrender that you say Lord that I give up that Lord I'm gonna stop fighting that Lord I surrender that to your will that to your way that whatever you say Lord that that is what I'll do that Lord not my will that but let your will be done that then God that I I said, then Jesus that will work a work that in your soul that that'll raise you up that you no longer feel that God against you that but He begin to lift you up 
that to a higher place that in him that he's a good God that have you ever got to that place that where you just surrendered all that unto Jesus that and God that he said I was right here that all the time that I was here to lift you up that but you wouldn't let me that I was here to bless you that but you wouldn't let me that I was here to save you that but you wouldn't let me that but when Saul that he surrendered that unto God that God told him that to go that and I'm going to send a man that by the name of Ananias that to meet you in the city that and God spoke to Ananias that and he said arise that and go that to the street called straight that because there's one Saul that he is praying that first he was persecuting that and now he's praying that only God can turn around that the things you were doing that for the flesh that now you're making time that to spend with Jesus that when you make time in prayer that with Jesus that a time to talk that and have a talk with Jesus that you gotta turn off the television that turn off the internet that turn off everything Thing, that, and turn your face that, to the wall that, and that, that, focus on Jesus. That, how many know that when God that, speak a word to you, that, you know his voice. That, there are many voices that want to influence you. That, but Jesus, that, when he speaks, that, it's a still, that, small voice and uh, he'll lift you up and uh, he'll encourage you and uh, to say I'm here and uh, waiting for you and uh, he's a good God and uh, he told Ananias to go and uh, oh Lord I have a chosen servant and uh, but Ananias said wait a minute that I heard that about this man that I heard that the evil that he's done that to the saints that and he's trying to bind all those that that call on your name that but Jesus said that go that he's a chosen vessel that thank God that when God chose you that thank God that he pulled you out of religion that, and he chose you uh, that, to get to know him that, by the power that, of his spirit that, the fellowship that, oh what a fellowship that, what a joy that, you don't know what you're missing that, until you get this Holy Ghost that, and let it get you that, if Paul wanted to arrest that, all those that called on his name that, but God arrested him. That God laid his hands on him. That God got a hold of him. That when God grabbed you, that pull you out of your mess. That you say, Lord, that I want to stay that in your hands. That thank you for pulling me out of my mess. That Lord, keep me that in your holy place. That keep me that in that secret place. That oh, when no Nobody that can touch me but you. Somebody give God praise. Lord, I need your touch. Woo! I need your hand. Oh, Lord, to grab my hand. Let God's hand hold you. Let God's hand lift you up, but don't resist his hand. Don't fight against the hand of God. His hand is power. His hand is his word. Every part of his word, hallelujah, belongs to God. He's a written word. He's a spoken word. And he's the living word. And when the word of God is alive in you, my God, when that spoken word by the Holy Ghost 
it'll agree with you. Uh, see, when you're on one accord, oh, with this word, you can rejoice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you say, in the word of God, I got a hiding place. Yes, Lord. I just want your word to mold me. I want your word to make me. Don't let people influence you. Don't let your external situations influence you. But let Jesus influence you from the inside out. I thank him, saints. I trust that you. This was a message. Hallelujah. Sometimes not easy to digest. But God had three servants to address the same thing with regards to a resistant people, a stubborn people. And sometimes, saints of God, we have to acknowledge that we can be stubborn. <laughs> if you don't acknowledge, I'll say it for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We can be a rebellious people. When it comes to something that we don't want, when it comes to something that we don't like, we got a mind made up. Hallelujah. But when it comes to God's word, we got to remove that stubbornness. Hallelujah. See, instead of letting God have its way, they want to do it their own way. And if you want to make heaven your home, you can't follow your way. You can't do it your way. Jesus, I'm the way. I'm the truth. And I am the life. Life is spiritual. Not physical. Not only physical. I'm talking about life in God. Because we are born spiritually dead, but physically alive. It takes the infilling of the Holy Ghost, the second birth to change your spiritual condition. Your good works can't change your spiritual condition. It takes a power that come from above. And Saul, he went to that place and Ananias laid hands on him. His eyes, scales were on his eye, fell. And the Bible said he was filled with the Holy Ghost. See, that is our beginning with God. Not when you join the church, the church building, but it's when you were born into God's church. That is your beginning with God. And yet, God says you must work a work until the day is done. He's preparing us, preparing us for when he comes back for his bride. The church is the bride. Hallelujah. Believers all over this world, Holy Ghost filled, all over this world, there's going to be a gathering. And God said, this is what I'm preparing you for. This is what I'm trying to get you ready for. But he has to smooth out some wrinkles. He has to remove some spots in our lives. Don't, don't get upset when... God is, wants to address a spot in your life. Don't get upset when God wants to address an area where you need to improve. You know, call it constructive criticism. I know some people that don't like constructive criticism. <laughs> they take it personal. They don't want to be told that they're doing wrong. I worked as a supervisor for many years, and Sometimes it's not the message, but how you deliver the message. And uh, God's message is always a message of love. God's word is always for our betterment. Hallelujah, not for our demise. There's some people that like to gloat over your faults. And they see something that's not right, and they want to make you feel bad over that. Not God, not God. Hallelujah. God is trying to help us. Oh, Lord, and get us ready. He's preparing us for glory. And I don't, want, I don't want my coming to be in vain. 
Hallelujah. I don't want my service to God to be in vain. But saints, I want to hear, Lord, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That means we have to serve God not on our terms or our condition, but serve him according to his word. We have to learn to receive the sweet as well as the bitter. Hallelujah. Many just want the sweet parts of the word, but push aside the bitter. But it's the bitter that's going to make us better. And when you can digest and get the bitter down, hallelujah, it'll turn sweet. Yes, Lord. Only God can do that. Yes. <laughs> See, only God can make that which is bitter. We were a bitter people. Oh, when he found us. Yes. Ooh. But oh, I'm so glad he's sweeter and sweeter. Amen. Yes. Than the day before. God gets sweeter in our lives the more we submit to him. I bless God for his word. Hallelujah. Precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.